For a long time, Apple Studio Display has felt like an unfinished story. When it launched back in 2022, many people expected something bold. Something future-ready. Something that truly matched the power of Apple's modern Macs. Instead, what we got was fine. Not bad. Not great. Just fine. A 27-inch 5K panel. Good speakers. A decent webcam. Solid build quality. But also a fixed 60Hz refresh rate. No real HDR. Old display tech. And a price that felt hard to justify. People bought it anyway. Because it was Apple. Because it matched their Mac. Because there was no real alternative from Apple itself. But deep down, many creators knew something was missing. And now finally, it looks like Apple is ready to fix that. A new report has dropped. And this time, it changes everything. According to internal Apple code discovered by reliable sources, the next studio display is shaping up to be a very different product. A much more serious one. This is not a small refresh. This is not a quiet update. This is the display Apple should have launched years ago. Let's start with the biggest change. The one feature people have been asking for since day one. A higher refresh rate. For the first time ever, Apple's consumer display is expected to support variable refresh rate up to 120 Hz. Yes. Real promotion. The same smooth technology that Apple proudly markets on iPhones, iPads, and MacBook Pros. The same feature that somehow never made it to a display that costs over $1,500. That alone already makes the studio display too far more exciting than the current model. A higher refresh rate changes how everything feels. Scrolling becomes smoother. Animations feel more natural. Cursor movement looks cleaner. Even simple tasks feel faster. Once you get used to 120 Hz, going back to 60 feels slow. And Apple knows this. That's why this upgrade matters so much. For years, it felt awkward that Apple sold Macs and iPads with promotion, but no Apple display to match them. Now, that gap is finally closing. But Apple is not stopping there. The second massive upgrade is HDR. Not fake HDR. Not marketing HDR. But real, proper HDR. The current studio display technically supports a wider color range, but it lacks the brightness and contrast needed for true HDR content. This time, that is changing. Reports strongly suggest Apple is moving to mini-LED technology for the new studio display. This is the same display tech used in MacBook Pro models. And that is a huge deal. Mini-LED allows for much higher brightness, much deeper blacks, far better contrast, and much more accurate highlights. In simple terms, everything looks better. Bright scenes pop. Dark scenes stay dark. Colors feel richer. Details stand out. For creators, this matters a lot. Video editors can trust what they see. Photographers get more accurate previews. HDR workflows finally make sense on a desktop Apple display. This is exactly what users wanted from the beginning. And it finally looks like Apple listened. The internal code even references a new display identifier, believed to be J527. This is important, because it confirms this is not just a rumor. Multiple sources have seen it. Multiple analysts have mentioned it. And respected names in the Apple leak space are all pointing in the same direction. This display is real. And it is coming. Even more interesting is what's powering it. The current studio display runs on the A13 chip. That chip was already old when the display launched. It worked fine but it was never impressive. The new model, however, is expected to run on the A19 chip. Let that sink in. An A19 chip. Inside a monitor. That is a massive jump. This is the same class of processor you would expect in a flagship iPhone. Is it overkill? Absolutely. Does a display need that much power? Not really. But this is Apple. Apple loves over-engineering. And when Apple does this, it usually means one thing. They are planning features beyond the basics. Better image processing. Smarter camera handling. More advanced audio tuning. Possibly AI-powered features in the future. Even if those features are not fully revealed at launch, Apple is clearly future-proofing this display. And that makes sense. A monitor is something people keep for years. 
Apple wants this one to last. To understand why this upgrade matters so much, we need to look back at the original studio display. When it launched in 2022, it was positioned as a more affordable alternative to the Pro Display XDR. But that positioning never fully worked. Yes, it was cheaper. But it still felt expensive. It offered a 27-inch 5K panel with 600 nits of brightness. It had a built-in webcam. It had good speakers. But it also had limitations that were hard to ignore. Only one Thunderbolt port. Only USB-C expansion. No height adjustable stand unless you paid extra. No promotion. No HDR. At the time, many people expected Apple to update it sooner. That did not happen. In fact, Apple did not update a single external display for years. Even through 2025, nothing changed. That silence made the studio display feel outdated very quickly. Meanwhile, competitors moved forward. Higher refresh rates became common. Better HDR became expected. Bigger screens became popular. Apple stood still. Now, it finally looks like that period is ending. All signs point to early 2026 as the launch window. This timing makes sense. Apple is expected to launch new high-end Macs around the same period. New MacBook Pros. New M-Series chips. Possibly new desktop machines. Launching a serious display alongside serious Macs is the right move. It would feel strange to debut this display next to an entry-level product. This is a premium monitor. It belongs next to premium hardware. There is also a growing belief that Apple is preparing two new displays, not just one. Two internal code names have been mentioned. One of them almost certainly refers to the new studio display. The other is still a mystery. It could be the next Pro Display XDR. Or it could be something new. And that opens up an interesting possibility. For years, users have asked Apple for a bigger consumer display. The current 27-inch size no longer feels generous. Many people want something larger. Something like 32 inches. Not a full pro display. But something in between. A larger display with strong specs, priced reasonably for professionals and enthusiasts. If Apple launches a 32-inch option alongside the studio display too, it would make a lot of sense. That market is wide open. Creators want more screen space. Developers want more room for code. Editors want bigger timelines. Apple could easily dominate this space if they choose to. For now, that remains speculation. But the fact that two displays are being referenced internally is very interesting. Let's go back to the refresh rate discussion for a moment. The 120Hz support is exciting, but there is an important detail to understand. Not every Mac will be able to drive this display at full resolution and full refresh rate. A 5K display at 120Hz requires a lot of bandwidth more than older Thunderbolt versions can handle. This means full promotion support will likely require Thunderbolt 5. That is important. On older Thunderbolt 3 or 4 Max, the display may still work perfectly fine, but at lower refresh rates. Possibly 5K at 60Hz. Or 4K at 120Hz. This is not a downside. It is simply a limitation of current technology. And Apple is clearly designing this display with future Macs in mind. The latest high-end MacBook Pros already support Thunderbolt 5. So if you want the full experience, Apple has an answer. Upgrade your Mac. This also explains why Apple waited. Launching a 120Hz 5K display before the Macs could fully support it would have caused confusion. Now, the ecosystem is ready. Everything is lining up. One of the biggest frustrations with the original studio display was how it felt behind Apple's own devices. Your iPhone felt smoother. Your iPad felt smoother. Your MacBook Pro felt smoother. But your expensive desktop display did not. That mismatch always felt wrong. With the studio display too, that finally changes. Everything becomes consistent. Everything feels modern. Everything feels intentional. And that brings us to another area Apple must fix. The stand. The original studio display charged extra for height adjustment. That decision was widely criticized. It felt out of touch. It felt greedy. It felt unnecessary. By the time this new display launches, that mistake cannot be repeated. 
In 2026, height adjustment should be standard, not optional, not locked behind a paywall. This is basic functionality. Apple knows this. And if they want this display to compete seriously, they must get it right. Beyond that, there are other quality of life improvements Apple could include. Better speakers. Improved microphones. A more capable camera. The current webcam is acceptable, but not great. With an A19 chip inside, Apple could dramatically improve image processing. They could make video calls look sharper, cleaner, more natural. That would matter more than adding gimmicks. At the end of the day, this display needs to feel complete. It needs to feel like Apple finally took external monitors seriously again. And based on everything we know so far, that is exactly what is happening. Mini LED. 120 Hz. HDR. A powerful chip. Potential new sizes. A long overdue refresh. This is not a small update. This is a statement. Apple is stepping back into the monitor game properly. And for creators, professionals, and longtime Apple users, that is incredibly exciting.